You may be seated. Nathaniel said to Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? We all come from somewhere. We all come from somewhere. We probably each have some hometown, some place we would call our hometown. But where we're from doesn't define who we are. It didn't define Jesus. And it doesn't have to define us. Still, where we come from is part of us, sometimes for better, sometimes not. How many of you today were born and raised in New York, New York? <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Four, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so where are the rest of you from? Where's your hometown? Call it up. Hey, whoa, I love that. Last week, Charlene and I made the mistake of watching the movie Kate and Leopold. Anybody see that? Don't. Okay. <laughs> it's a movie with a great cast that should have been good, and it definitely is not. At one point, toward the end of the film, a 19th century British Duke, played by Hugh Jackman, is about to announce his engagement when who should arrive via a time portal from the 21st century? Don't ask. But Meg Ryan playing Kate McKay. And so, of course, the Duke announces that he's going to marry Kate McKay of the McKays of... And she pipes up from the back. Massapequa. It's supposed to be a laugh line, thank you. Unless, like me, you happen to come from Massapequa. Can anything good come out of Massapequa? Uh, yeah. John's Gospel starts with Jesus hanging out in Bethany, which is near Jerusalem, the big city. But he's not from there. And 43 verses into John's Gospel, as Pearl just read for us, Jesus decides to go back up north to Galilee, where he's from. But Jesus doesn't go back to Nazareth, his hometown. Only once in any of the Gospels does Jesus return to his hometown. And it doesn't go well, does it? They try to throw him off a cliff. <laughs> it's a topic for a different sermon. Jesus decides, though, to go back to Galilee, and first he finds Philip. In this passage, people are always looking for and finding something, someplace, or someone. Jesus finds Philip, who then finds Nathanael, and Philip tells Nathanael that he, Philip, has found Jesus. And Philip invites Nathanael to come with him to try to find Jesus as well. Now you get the feeling that in the whole of John's Gospel, everyone's looking for something, everyone's seeking and searching, but they're not always finding what they need, and they're not always finding what it is that they're looking for. This past Monday, we were invited to join a press conference down at City Hall dealing with the treatment of recently arrived immigrant families forced to leave their shelters after 60 days, as we know. So a few of us met here at the church, and we decided we would travel together down to City Hall. So we took the subway to Park Place. We crossed the street and looked through the City Hall gates and saw nobody. Then one of the group said, well, actually the email says City Hall Park. When in doubt, read the email. So off we went to City Hall Park. And there we saw nobody. Did we get the date wrong? Did we get the time wrong? Are we the only fools who are going to show up at this? 
So we read the email more carefully. City Hall Park, the Chamber Street side. Phew. So we took off for the north side of City Hall Park and the other side of City Hall, and there we found nobody. We were beginning to get discouraged. However, we randomly ran into Chris, who was our Christmas Eve tenor, walking south towards us, and Chris said that he had seen a big group of people gathering at Foley Square a few blocks north. Maybe that was us. And just then, some United Federation of Teachers folks came carrying big signs going our way, and sure enough, they were able to confirm that that was to be indeed the gathering spot. Our persistence finally paid off, but it wasn't easy. The whole episode made me think, believe it or not, about my spiritual life, how unpersistent I often am, how easy it is to uh, just give up, stop looking for the next deeper thing, and stay where I am, even when I know that where I'm at spiritually isn't where I need to be. I think of that prayer that Dr. King was so fond of quoting. <laughs> Lord, we ain't what we ought to be. And we ain't what we want to be. We ain't what we're going to be. But thank God, we ain't what we used to be. In our scripture passage, our friend Philip knows that his own spiritual life needs a little something, and he knows further that his own spiritual search has paid off in finding this Jesus. And so he finds Nathaniel, and he, to sell him on the search, Philip tells him, we found the one whom Moses talks of in the Torah, that the prophesi prophets prophesied all about. And that sounds amazing. That sounds enticing. But then, as you heard, Philip blows it. He tells Nathaniel, it's Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. And that's where Philip loses him. Because what Nathaniel picks up, what he hears is, Jesus, son of nobody, from no place. And that lets Nathaniel dismiss him out of hand. This Jesus is from the wrong place, he's from the wrong people, why bother? You know, human beings are judgy. <laughs> it's who we are, it's what we do. We're judgy, we're quick to categorize, we're fast to dismiss. We judge, we judge other people, we judge ourselves. And there's no real way around all that. The problem is, so often, we're judging by the wrong criteria, right? Dr. King used to say, people judge people not by the content of their character, but by the color of their skin. I wish I could say that's not true anymore, Dr. King. We are judged so often by whom we love rather than how we love. By what we do for a living rather than the way we do it. By how well we speak rather than what we have to say. We're judged by where we're from, rather than how far we've come from there. I want to say that again. Too often we are judged by the color of our skin, not the color content of our character, by whom we love and not how we love, by what we do for a living and not how we do it, by how well we speak, not by what we say, and God knows we're judged by where we're from and not how far we've come. Can anything good come from a place like Nazareth? To his credit, Philip doesn't argue with Nathaniel. He just says, what does he say? Come and see. Come and see. Take a look. Have a listen. Make up your own mind about this Jesus. I'm convinced that nobody ever gets talked into anything, you know what I mean? Especially in these days of our fixed religious or cultural or political opinions. 
we don't get talked into anything. But still, that invitation is important. Come and see. It hurts me that so many people have given up on the Christian faith, the way of Jesus, and, and so often for good reasons. You're here because you haven't given up. You haven't given up on something you know that at its core holds truth, speaks love, and bends towards justice. You're here because you have a sense that the Christian faith is not necessarily all the things you may have heard growing up or the things you read or hear about in the news. You're here because maybe somebody sometime told you or you told yourself, come and see. I'm going to come and see. Who knows? Christianity, the way these folks try to practice it somewhere, maybe here, might speak to you. And it might not, but come and see for yourself. Come and see. To his credit, that's what Nathaniel does. He does just that. He comes, he sees, he makes up his own mind, and his persistence pays off. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of New York City? Or New City, New York, or Nest City, Kansas, or Manhattan, Kansas, <laughs> or Austin, or Oberlin, or Houston, or Binghamton, or London, or Marion, or Madison. Can anything good come from Reisterstown, or Fenton, or Fort Wayne, or Fort Lauderdale, or Oak Park, or Klamath Falls, or St. Petersburg, Charlottesburg, Mecklenburg, Harrisburg, or Hattiesburg, from Indianapolis, or what did I miss? Can anything good come from all these places? The answer is absolutely. It can, and it does, and it did. Wherever we're from, we're here now. We are where we are. We are who we are. And who we are is not all of what we're becoming. As we sang a moment ago, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who hast led us so far on the way, thou who hast by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path. We pray. Here's the thing. I think Jesus still believes in us. I think Jesus still believes in the church, not for what it is, God knows, but for what he knows it can become. Something that at its core holds truth and speaks love and bends towards justice. I think Jesus still calls each of us the way he calls Philip, because Jesus sees something in us that's more than where we're from, more than what we are, but is all about what Jesus knows we might become. And still invites each of us, wherever we are, wherever we're from, to come and see. And to celebrate together the one who has loved us, called us, and brought us thus far on the way. Amen? Amen.